this is Steve Rothstein from Rothstein Model Trains. Decided it was time for another video update of our layout status. Show you some of the changes we've made, some of the improvements we've made. And if you hang around long enough, we do have a question I'm going to ask for comments on. Uh, just some decision on which way to go. The biggest area of improvements we've got on the layout is our commercial area. In our town, we've built up the residential area some. We've got the four houses with driveways and cars and everything. We're still gonna put some grass around them. Uh, or maybe gravel and make it look like Arizona. The commercial area has two strip centers, which right now are identical. We're gonna put new store names on one, so it'll be different stores. We have a Woolworths in the center because I grew up shopping at Woolworths. Um, hope everybody my age remembers that store and I doubt if the younger guys will. And we've got a Dairy Queen and as you can see, most of our town is old fashioned, old style, but the Dairy Queen has been remodeled. You're seeing a lot of that lately in Texas at least as they're changing the Dairy Queens and tearing them down and putting in the new style like that. And we do have the factory that we have had. Um, we do have one minor problem with getting a residential area. We planned on a mobile home park uh, out behind the houses. And we got the two, first two mobile homes, which were what was in stock at the one store I happened to be at when we decided to do this. That company has since stopped making those mobile homes, so we can't get any more. The only company that makes them costs charges between three and four times as much as these, and they're much fancier than I wanted for our mobile home park. Um, we're trying to get some. I have a friend who has got a 3D printer who is going to try and print me some. He's printing up some other stuff for us, so you may see changes in our shopping in downtown area. Uh, you definitely see some changes in our shopping in downtown area. He's printing, 3D printing th some things like a water tower because almost every small town has one. He's printed us a fire station. Uh, we're going to look at post offices and other stores and buildings like that and we'll see how we're going to do this. But the residential area, he's trying to work on getting us 3D printed mobile homes that we can paint and put in because I really like the idea of the mobile home park. As you might have noticed, I've got several trains sitting on the layout right now. I'm going to uh, start the layout moving so you can see them. One of the problems, of course, is it's a little harder to hear me over the train sounds, and I'm going to try and cut them out as we do this. If I can remember how. That's one of the best things about DCC is that you can change the trains around. Um, and tell them to turn off the sound. And let's see if that helps. Yeah, that helps a lot. You just won't hear the sound, which I like the sounds of them, but when you're making the video, it helps to have it running. Uh, let's see. Two, three, four. We need to change speed a little. One needs to speed up a lot. I'm sorry, one of the advantages of our trains, I do have the trolleys working in the downtown area, but to keep them spaced requires constant attention to them, to the throttle settings on them. So by the end of this video, you'll probably see all four of them clump together. You might be able to tell that I like to build models or get models of the entire train, not just of specific locomotives. I like the locomotives, but I like to get the entire train when I can. So on the outer loop right now, we've got two trains running. Again, one of the great parts about going to DCC is I did this. The yellow and green train that's coming around now is a model of the Chicago and Northwestern train. Uh, we call it the grandma train because my wife took a ride on that when she was a young girl, went from St. Louis to Chicago. And since then, we got it just for that, and it's the grandma train. The second one behind it 
is a poor man's model of the Broadway Limited, sort of. The Broadway Limited was a Pennsylvania Railroad train that ran from Chicago to New York. Once it got into Altoona, Pennsylvania, it had to change to an electric engine. And these are the old, old cars, the 20s and 30s style passenger car for it. It's not nearly as long as the real consist was. Um, and they do make complete layouts of the Broadway Limited uh, with the diesel engines on them and more modern cars. Uh, by the way, it was called the Broadway Limited because of the rails it ran, not because of New York City and Broadway. Uh, the track, had, the road it ran, or the route it ran, had four tracks together. So that was pretty broad lane, and they called that the Broadway. On the inside, you're going to see two trains that sort of match up. One is not quite right, the other is. Well, neither one's quite right. There are scale models of the UT, Union Pacific, excursion sets. And they ran one excursion with an FEF-3, which is not the engine I have pulling the one on the inside. Uh, that's an old UT Mikado, because we're working on getting our FEF made to DCC instead of DC. They ran that until they got the big boy remodeled and once the big boy was restored and back on they've been running the big boy which is the outside loop and you can see the size comparison between the zoo and why that's the name, name big boy neither of these trains is quite correct because i don't have the water tenders they use they're on water kind of coming out with those again next month or so i hope uh, and I've got some on order. And they also, in the excursion, use diesel helper engines on them, not to help push, but to help carry the electrical load and maintain the cars and so on. And that gets us to my poll question. For one year, Union Pacific ran a road, an excursion, and I don't know if they've ever done it more than that, where they put both the big boy and the FEF in its same consist. So it had two steam locomotives pulling and one diesel helping. And my question, I'd appreciate anyone's comments, is would I be better off, do you think it would look better to have them in one consist or if I should keep it as two separate trains? I've already got the diesels ordered and the water tenders ordered so that we can build it either way. The trick to putting it in one consist, and I'm having a little trouble with, not much, is the, you, the big boy and the FDF both came without a coupler on the front of the locomotive so they won't hook to each other. I am working on ordering those trying to find which couplers will work on the FEF. I know which one works on the big boy, but the look consist had the big boy out front and the FEF behind it. Other model trains we do have um, over here sitting idle right now. We've got the Redding and Blue Mountain train with its cars on it. And I've got a full consist for an Amtrak train from the 70s. The only trick to it is that I've got the locomotive down at the hobby shop getting converted to DCC also. So that's our status. Anything you'd like to see, let me know. Um, I hope I got that right. I hate when those two frames to collide. So we will let you know how things are going. We'll do another status in a couple weeks as we get more of the stuff up and running and hopefully decide which way we're going on the uh, exploding sets. Thank you very much. I appreciate your listening and any comments.